Welcome to the shooting show. This week it's a fox shooting special. First, we're up in the sky with Scott McKenzie, followed by Tim Pillbeam down on the range sharing his fox shooting tips. It's almost like deer stalking up here. Um, very little is done from the vehicle. Like, see the, for the fox first of all from the vehicle, but it's it's pretty much straight out the door from there, uh, and then you stalk into it. I don't mean to boast it up sky, but it's, it is much more difficult. Um, you get much less, but it's it's much more rewarding uh, in the end. It's different, and I enjoy it. Yeah. So what's the issue here, Scott? Right, there was uh, a couple of lambs have been taken uh, by a fox on one of the crofts. So we're just going to head out and uh, taking a big piece of the moor ground uh, by the uh, by the croft and see if we can pick it up. I'm pretty certain it's a dog fox doing the damage. But, uh, we'll see, we'll have a look. As soon as the lambing starts, you know, there's lots of activity, lots of smells and scents. The uh, foxes are cubbing as well that's when it all starts to kick off phone calls you know, lambs being taken so i it's important to sort of get on fo on top of fox numbers leading up to lambing time and then keep on that control and checking dens yeah well on the first night we had a first fox that was seen a long way away we actually we think we saw a pair uh or maybe not a pair but maybe a, a f one fox chasing away another fox and we, we got closer into this and it, it was staying around the same area. Um, and then we, we moved from point to point, shooting position to shooting position. Uh, eventually we got close enough and uh, Scott was doing his calls and things and it, it moved, it was, it was interested. Um, and uh, I, I, saw, I saw it coming across uh, broadside uh, so I could see the dark of its back. But uh, obviously I didn't quite read the situation correctly and shot over the top of it by probably less than an inch, but a miss is a miss, these things happen. Scott, we've ended the night a little differently to how we normally end it. We're in a rather cosy looking body. Why have we ended up here tonight? as opposed to back in our real beds. <laughs> well, you know, we decided to have an all-nighter out on the foxes, you know, just get out there and uh, sort of hit the ground and make the most of the time, the good weather, which is, you know, uh, we don't get much of it on sky, so we're making the most of it. So, yeah, we've uh, been out all night, decided to get back in, crank up the fire, have a few drams and uh, hit the hay. And uh, same again tomorrow, yep. or today. <laughs> Fifteen minutes to the witching hour. Yeah, this one was this one we spotted in the headlights of the car originally, uh, and we pulled up the road a bit, uh, got out of the vehicle, got to another shooting position. Um, the wind was not playing ball at all with us. Really, didn't do us much favours. Uh, this fox was. It was interesting the squeaks, uh, but 
it didn't come running in, but eventually it started to move and it came in, it came in quite close. It was probably under 100 yards, uh, but then there was lots of ridges and, and dips in the land in front of us and it was, it was working its way close to us out of sight. And eventually it, it came into probably about 70 yards, uh, 70 to 80 yards, and uh, we put the, the put the light on it, and it, it was not happy at all. The coaxer just—it was enough to get its uh, get its interest and start coming in. Hole number three. <laughs> I find this time of year just a, a you know a, a bit of gentle calling is what they need. Nothing too harsh and nothing too fierce and not too much of it and what I found is that my own call that I make uh, with the reeds that I use works great with uh, the original Best Fox Call from Best Fox Call UK. Um, you know, you've, you've got a diversity in the sound and you can use one complements the other. Uh, you know, I can use my call in a situation if I need to call a, a fox that's quite, you know, at some distance, I can bring it down and then I can switch to the best fox call to sort of coax it in uh, and play it to, to where we need to get it. So yeah, the, the sort of torches that I'm gone to now, I mean, I used to be like many others when they first started out, lead acid batteries, uh, big lamps, and uh, I've used them up until quite recently. And then, you know, sort of heard talk of the these uh, new LED torches, which are focusable beams and sort of, you know, Took, took the punt and bought one of these Nightmaster 800s. Really impressed with it, the sort of uh, the variability of the beam. You know, you can focus it out for scanning and then you can tighten it up for taking the shot. Uh, and then I've got a, uh, another one on, I fit on top of the scope. So I scan with this one, switch to the one on top of the scope and uh, ready to take the shot. And it's been working fine and it just, it saves all the amount of gear you have to carry now. We got out of the truck, got into a shooting position and we stayed there, we didn't move from that position. Uh, it came in slowly, uh, the last bit it came in quite fast and then gave Scott the nod that it was, I was ready to shoot. It sounded good. Yeah. Did you see anything go down? Uh, I didn't see it go anywhere. I don't know where it is. You've got one up the chamber, haven't you? Yeah. So, uh, I will. We'll mark it from here and then uh, we'll hike out there and cross the burn and go and pick it up. Yeah, because I could, I could see it sitting and it was looking directly at us. Uh -huh. It looked down the valley right, and I was yeah. like, right, I'm going to wait until it looks back at me. And it looked back at me again and I like just dropped just below its jaw. Well, I'm pretty certain it it'll be a vixen. I'm pretty certain it won't be what it was. I mean, Let's see, Scott, I'm holding you for that now. I will have a bit. <laughs> it's a pint on it there. Good hill fox, really not, good. Not the vixen condition. you were guessing, Scott. No, I, I'm afraid I owe you both a, <laughs> a dram for that. As we've come to look for this one, we've noticed another set of eyes further out, so I'm pretty certain it'll uh, it'll be the vixen to this big dog. And uh, obviously, there's a there's a den in the area somewhere, so that'll need to be found and, and dealt with. About 150 yards, I would say. But so not too far, not too close. Yeah, good shot, though. Good shot. Scott there showing us pest control West Coast style. And now it's the shooting show news. This is the Shooting Show News. The countdown has begun to the CLA Game Fair. It's less than 10 weeks until the biggest countryside event of the year, which is moving up north for 2015 to Harewood House in Yorkshire. Expect a huge array of field sports attractions, including a packed gun maker's row, gun dog demonstrations, a clay line, fishing and more. And you can save money on the price of entry by booking online. Head to gamefair.co.uk to get your tickets now. Aussie scientists have backed Basque when it comes to lead shot. Australia's Health and Medical Research Council has published a new paper that says it's not possible to conclude lead is the direct cause of negative health effects. 
It says there's no convincing evidence for politicians to base further legislation on. Basque's Alan Jarrett said the study supports the position that there is no need to change the existing guidelines on the consumption of shot game. Places are filling up at the Clay Shooting Classic 2015, hosted by the Clay Shooting Company from the 24th to the 27th of June. Set in the stunning Gloucestershire countryside, the 150 bird sporting is a key date in the clay shooting calendar. With the addition of the classic sport trap, a bustling traders village and the charity team classic, plus a £35,000 prize fund split among all classes and categories, it's set to be a great shoot. Book online now at www.theclayshootingcompany.com Shooting was a major winner in the general election. That's the final story after the votes have been counted and the government formed. According to Basque's count, there are 350 pro-shooting MPs in the House of Commons, giving shooting an official 50-seat majority. However, with 40% of MPs who is unknown, the majority is likely to be a lot more in effect. The government will start to set out its plans for the countryside on Wednesday, when the Queen's speech is made. EU directives that regulate shooting have come under scrutiny. The European Commission has launched a public opinion survey on the roles of birds and habitats directives in protecting nature. These directives influence quarry lists and shooting seasons and ensure that shoots are protected from unsustainable development on their land. Shooting organisations are urging their members to support the directives in their current form. Head to the website on screen now to respond. And finally, there are more questions over Scottish land reforms that could hurt shooting and stalking estates. The SNP is pushing through legislation that scraps tax breaks for estates and curbs landowners' rights. But it's emerged that the party doesn't know what the impact of the move will be on food production or how much money the public purse could afford to make the reforms work. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association is campaigning against the reforms. That was the Shooting Show News. I'm zeroing a rifle for fox shooting. So I'm using light ammunition, 70 grain in this case, uh, ballistic tip going out at 3,300 feet per second. And I'm solely using it for foxes. So what zero do I set it at? Do I set it at 100, 150, 200? It's totally down to personal choice. If I just run, run through two scenarios here. Most foxes are shot between know, 80 and 150 yards. But if you're out uh, during the daytime or at night time, you probably maximum 250, maybe 300, um, but um, probably the maximum would be 250 yards. So bearing that in mind is where do we set our zero? If I set 100 yards zero, at uh, 200 yards it's going to be about three inches low, so that far, and at 300 yards it's going to be about a foot low. But if I set a 200 yards zero, at uh, 250 yards, it's going to be about three inches low, and at 300 yards, it's going to be six inches low. So we're talking about a point blank here. If nearly all my fox shootings will be up to 250 yards, if you set your zero at 200, you just point at the animal. It's as simple as that. The kill zone of a fox, this is a frontal fox, the kill zone of a fox is probably about eight inches round. So basically, if you can actually zero your rifle, so anything up to 250 yards, you literally just point at it at the kill zone, you will kill it. A 200 yards zero is best. If I was using 100 yards zero, if it gets out 200 yards, I'm looking at about a six inch drop. Um, you know, that's getting below the, on the low part of the kill zone here. I can start over allowing, holding over. Well, actually, if you can take that away and have a 200 yards zero, everything through for 250, just point at it. And that's what I do on very flat, fast shooting projectiles 200, 220 yards zero, and literally everything out to 250, 275, you just point at the animal. And at night time, how much easier is it to do that? So that's the way I do it. If I'm shooting uh, deer in woodland stalking, I'll probably have 100 yards zero, because I'm using heavier ammunition. I've just come back from uh, Scotland uh, on the uh, Hindcull, and uh, on my 308, I've got 150 yards zero. I'm using, very, I'm using 125 grain bullets, Everything out to 200, I just point at the animal. 250, I've got about a seven inch drop. So we're really on a big red deer. I don't need to think of an awful lot. So back to my fox shooting, 200 yards zero, 
on light ammunition, I think it's absolutely perfect for general fox shooting in the, in the UK, both at day and at night. So I just walked down to the other side of the farm here and I've put a couple of targets up. Uh, one's about 175 yards, one's actually quite a bit further, but they're slightly different targets. The first one's actually a typical fox one we get at night time where the fox is sat down looking at you and all you can see is a pair of eyes and his very narrow body. The kill zone is actually quite narrow. By the time you take your fluffy bits off a fox, it's probably about four or five inches wide and depth wise it's probably about maybe a foot maximum. So it's quite a, quite a tough shot, um, you know, 150, 180 yards it should be reasonably straightforward, but it's only got a small kill zone. Um, what I'm going to do today is uh, try some sticks. I normally take sticks out with me, uh, for, for lamping, especially if I'm with, with a person who's holding the light for me. And I just wander around. I use a bipod 90% of the time. My view is actually if I could walk uh, and find a, a higher place to use a bipod, a lot more stable and it's much easier to shoot. But uh, always take a pair of sticks with me. I got some um, quad pods, uh, absolutely brilliant. I love these. I've had these for about three months now. They're uh, sold by Hammond uh, Sporting Supplies. It just, they're just superb. They come from Denmark, but they're just so solid. To adjust them, they've got these little adjusters here. You push them in, twist the base, and out they pop. And uh, there we go, they're there. That do for me nicely. Now, why do I like them so much? Is because they are so solid, they're beautifully built. Um, I, I can't fault them. Um, perfect for that uh, standing shot. And, uh, but they're very, very popular. They're a bit heavier than a lot of sticks, um, but they are very, very stable. So um, as I've used them quite a bit over the last two months and I can't speak hardly enough of them. Well, I'll have a go with these and see how we get on with them. We've got a forward-facing fox here, uh, about 180 yards away. Uh, reasonably straightforward shot, uh, especially off sticks. If I was off a bipod, it'd be very, very simple, I would have thought. Very little wind. Uh, wind's coming from the northeasty today. Uh, not enough to worry about at this distance. So uh, let's uh, see how we get on. It's all about stable position. Sticks. If you're a deer stalker, um, you should know all about your sticks. But sticks is all about trying to get your sticks as high as you possibly can. If you get them too low, crouching over, it's not so stable. I always like to get mine fairly high and I stick my stomach forward so I've arched my back. And uh, I'm actually relaxed. I'm just trying to get in a position where I'm actually fully, fully relaxed. And actually like that, I can only stay here for quite a long time. So I'm fully relaxed. I've got quite high, push my stomach forward. And there we go. Okay, 180 yards. I've got 200 yards zero set on my on the scope. So basically, it's just straight at it, as uh, as I explained before. Um, shooting with sticks is always something a bit uh, of a lottery in some ways. If you're not particularly stable, for this shot for some reason I'm absolutely really, really um, very, very stable. And the shot's actually got just below its uh, its its face actually, so it's actually perfect placement on that. Um, as with any, any form of shooting, my philosophy is, is that as I pull the trigger, uh, the trigger breaks. I keep my finger on the trigger for at least two seconds and also I look through the telescopic sight for at least two seconds. So I actually subconsciously go shoot one, two, then I either recycle or, or uh, actually have a look up. So I'm actually looking through now, especially if you've got a, a light caliber 223 or um, well, the, the lighter bullets, you don't get a huge amount of muzzle lift. So you should be able to see, if you just look through it, the, the impact, uh, the actual animal as, it, uh, as it's hit. So basically, it's very simple. Pull the trigger, count to two, one, two, and also just keep looking through the sight picture. And uh, that stops people looking up very quickly and stop people actually taking their fingers off the trigger too fast and actually not following through, following through that shot. Our last fox is actually 260 yards away. It's a very typical kind of foxing shot. Uh, across the field uh, of beans here, got a very, very safe backstop. Uh, I'll go back to my 200 yards zero. Uh, it's, my bullet should be uh, at 250 yards, it should be dropping by about three inches. So really all I need to do is actually aim at the, the, the kill zone and I should kill the fox. If I had 100 yards zero, 
you know, I need to, to hold over. So that's why I have a 200 yard zero. Um, how am I going to shoot it? On the wrong side of the fence, I could uh, use my sticks, I suppose, but I think I'm not that confident off my sticks to shoot that at uh, 250 yards. I can put my rifle on top of the fence post here. Um, once again, I know I'm not pretty good doing that. And I can sit next to the gate fence post here and actually just hold the rifle. So uh, there's quite a few different things you can do. And this will happen at night time. You want to get a bit closer or you're not too, you're not in a particularly good shooting position. Um, in this case, I'm going to walk along, jump over and get nice stable with, uh, with a bipod and see if we can uh, nail this fox at uh, 260 odd yards. A lot of people have the bipods too high. It all depends what type of bipod you've got. So I've got a, I think it's a six to 13 bipod. I think it's quite a good size. Some are too high. If they're too high, you're actually not so comfortable, not so stable and your head's crane right up. So try to get as, if you can, comfortable as you possibly can on them. And uh, taking the prone shot, uh, some people actually use their forehand over here. Some people have it there. Just from, from doing a lot of shooting, I use this, uh, my front hand, and I put it over here somewhere. So, so my rifle's sitting in the, the web of my thumb. It sits there, and I grab hold of my jacket. And that gives me a very, very stable shooting platform. And I can squeeze it, move it around, up and down sideways. And that's probably about as stable as I can get. I'm actually on that, and my uh, centre of my reticle is actually not moving anywhere outside of the kill zone of the fox. So basically use your front hand, non-trigger non hand, and grab hold of that, perhaps grab hold of the strap sometimes as well. And uh, that's your stable shooting position there. Yep, yeah, yeah. 260 yards away, I've got uh, a fair bit of wind coming from the left to the right hand side. I allowed about three inches of wind, and if we go to the target, we see what happened. So I've got probably about five or six inches of wind. So it's still been a, a great kill, but I've probably under allowed uh, for the wind. In the kill zone itself, I aimed um, at, the, at the probably just uh, half to middle, half to the top of the kill zone and my elevation was absolutely spot on for, for a rifle which I've obviously only been shooting for a few days. So once I know the exact ballistics of the rifle, it would just be automatic, boof, I know exactly what to do. So under, I under allowed for the wind, still had a good, a good, good kill on the fox, he got it straight through the neck. Um, but um, yeah, the, the rifle is actually shooting very accurately. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.